So there are, in my mind, two themes for this week. The explicit one, or the main one, is this, what's called the five dharma samadhis, or five qualities of dharma samadhi, which is, the word samadhi here relates to the fact that this is not just an individual quality of heart and mind that arises, but they're really something that um, arises and moves through us, something that we, we open to and kind of fills us or becomes a little bit more the state of who we are. Because samadhi is a state of being more than it is with a, partic- in a particular uh, laser focus of the mind. And so these five qualities can become more like the states that we abide in. And these five states are what I'm calling uh, uh, gladness, joy, tranquility, happiness, and concentration. And that, it, um, and these begin to uh, not just these begin to kind of have a life, not exactly of their own, but in a life of their own. That they begin to emerge and have a, their own kind of momentum through us to fill us and be here as meditation deepens. So the first theme is, is these fives, this uh, qualities. The second is the way in which these are a natural function, natural quality. And that we have this natural flow or uh, uh, unfolding, evolving, that can happen that uh, is sometimes associated with the Dharma. It's the Dharma that's moving through us. So much so that some people talk about, uh, I like to talk about, that not only do we practice meditation in the Dharma, we're also being practiced by it. At some point, something kicks in that something is alive within us that begins unfolding and opening and maturing us that is not exactly our doing, but which we enable, which we make room for. And it's phenomenally inspiring and faith-producing to feel this Dharma flow, this Dharma stream or current beginning to awaken up inside of us. So as not to make it too... um, abstract to, I don't know what, supernatural or something. Some of this I really associate uh, with a uh, 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 getting out of our own way. When there's a lot of stress, a lot of tension, a lot of resistance, a lot of agitation, that um, we actually interfere with the natural flow of our, uh, all kinds of things, probably our hormones and our stress hormones and our muscles and our our full physiology and our psychology works a lot better when it's relaxed and at ease. Agitation, resistance, <clears throat> freezing up, all kind of gunks up the system. And part of what meditation does, it begins to let go and relax the agitation, the holding, the resistance, the bracing ourselves and allows us to come into a kind of the natural, you know, I don't know exactly the right word, natural wholeness, the natural fullness, the the way that this uh, system of ours can operate really in a healthy way, which is feels phenomenal, especially because many of us spend a lot of time not there because we're preoccupied and caught up and afraid and anxious and greedy and planning and and fantasy and feeling there's never enough and wanting more, so all kinds of things. And meditation allows us to let go of all these desires and all these fears and all these agitations and stresses that often preoccupy the mind and have this negative influence in our body and allows us to experience kind of what feels much more like a natural state of being which feels so good in itself and can bring a sense of gladness and joy. So to give you kind of a, maybe a little bit of reductionalistic idea of this, um, but I think it's, uh, it's, so, it's such a simple thing. It's not like a complicated thing. And, and that is, for example, if you take uh, and hold something really tight for a really long time, so your, your hand clenches around the object and gets really, really tired and sore from holding it. When you finally release the hand, 
uh, it fe certainly feels good to have the release. To just, but some, not only does it feel good, the relief of it, but also there can feel this. Now there's a wonderful flow of blood, of energy, of tingling and warmth that just feels delightful. To it's been freed up, and there's something else is f moving, and it just feels so good and delightful. There's a joy, there's a gladness that's there in the hand. Or if we spend a lot of time maybe going for a long hike in the mountains and we're really tired, and finally we stop walking and sit down, the body can have a certain relief from no longer working. The muscles can begin to relax. And as the muscles relax, sometimes it, they just feel so happy and delighted to just be kind of finally not working so much. There is, <clears throat> so there is a kind of a natural feeling of delight, joy, gladness that comes when the chronic tensions we have begin to settle away and quiet down. And it releases, just like the hand gets, certain kind of energy in the hand gets released when we open up. So there's a kind of a release of energy in our whole system, a release of the flow of, of a kind of a unified feeling of being or um, uh, that begins to flow, that just feels so good. And some of this being engaged in this process of deepening and relaxing and opening to this capacity for natural wholeness that we have can feel so good, can be inspiring. It can feel the Dharma is moving through us. And, um, and to know, even if you're not there, even to know you're in the neighborhood of it can be so glad, oh, oh finally, I'm here in the neighborhood. Here, I'm sitting down to meditate. This is where the Dharma is found. This not this embodied Dharma that is found within us. So a gladness arises, a joy can arise. Um, and a joy that is develops more and more. Uh, also, the more we are unagitated. The, the pity, the second part of these Dharma Samadhi is often associated with the mind, piti manasa. And, um, and uh, however, it's often felt when it's strong, very physically in the body. There's going to be a lot of tingling and energy and, and uh, all kinds of wonderful sensations in the body. As we settle more in meditation, as we open more, as we're more present for our experience, the physical side of this pity, of this joy, begins to abate and quiet down. And this is a further deepening of returning, coming into this deeper natural state where this extra agitation, because joy is a little bit of an agitated state, maybe much less than how we live daily life, but it's a little bit energized state. And at some point, uh, as the joy is there and we're content and happy, feel safe, feel like it's so good to be here, the mind is not so inclined to be thinking about other things or be concerned about things because it feels so satisfying to be here. That's a condition for the body to begin to relax in a very deep way, deeper than ordinary relaxation. And then there can well up a feeling of tranquility. And in this Dharma Samadhi, it's specifically named, called the tranquility of the body. And often it feels very physical and different people will feel at different places in the body. But there can be a kind of a flow, a warmth, a glow, or ever so slight delightful, maybe kind of like presence of pressure or something. They just feel so tranquil, so peaceful. Um, I sometimes feel it uh, coursing down my arms, through my elbows and upper arms a little bit. Sometimes I feel very much in the area just above my diaphragm, uh, this very strong physical feeling of tranquility. And, and there's a very much feeling of being embodied. Ah, th th so words like peace, undisturbed, tranquil, calm, and uh, maybe relaxed. And re relaxed is nice because there's also the verb relaxing. Uh, tranquil, there's tr tranquilizing, but that has an unfortunate, maybe medical kind of connotation. And um, settling, being settled. And, um, 
And when this uh, third step in the Dharma Samadhi arises, it's quite compelling. There's no doubt that oh, now this is tranquility. It can feel so, it feels like drinking uh, something um, really sublime, like just, you know, really drinking refreshing, cool, wonderful, settling water on a hot day or, or um, you know, or, you know, lay, you know, in the middle of the day after a busy, hard day, kind of laying in bed in a soft bed with, and just being so, you know, the body becomes so relaxed and at ease. Maybe waking up from a nap, there's something that pr- approaches that kind of tranquility. So, um, so the food, the nourishment for this kind of tranquility, uh, the Buddha said, is tranquility itself. So to begin tuning into where we feel calm, it's very easy that maybe we're so concerned with what we're thinking about, what we're, we're focusing on, what our concerns, we miss parts of who, what's going on. And perhaps there's more calmness in your body than you avail yourself of. Maybe it's not so difficult to touch into a little bit more place where you're settled or calm or maybe just a little bit more you can uh, calm yourself a teeny bit, relax your shoulders, your belly throughout the day. You might want to see if there's a, through your day, if you make tranquility and peace, sense of inner peace or calm a theme, a theme to keep coming back to over and over again, find it, come back to it, relax yourself and take the chance maybe for the next 24 hours to see, you know, one day in a lifetime to really make this day the day that you specialize, that you really explore and develop and get to know better and familiarize yourself, become become a good friend with your capacity for being calm or tranquil. I think it'll probably be a day well spent. And uh, you have many more days after this to be agitated if you want, but maybe for one day to make this your theme and stay close to it. And if you have a friend, maybe who you can share it with and, and see what you'll learn. See what you'll learn about this whole thing. So, um, and this will be a, the preparation for happiness. Uh, and there's this way these things flow. Um, gladness flows to joy, joy flows to tranquility, tranquility flows to something called happiness, and happiness flows to concentration. And um, I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. Thank you.